Yo, it's Elot, and uh, this is a video where I'm going to talk about my my first run of Fire Emblem Engage. Um, for some reason, some people seem to like the videos where I just talk about Fire Emblem. So if you like that, here's another one for you. Um, this is not going to be like the, the tier list videos I make about specific Fire Emblem entries because I'm not going to put this on a tier list yet. That would be stupid. <laughs> At least I think that would be stupid. Um, seems a little early for that. But um, yeah, I just want to talk about it, I guess. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, we're going to see <laughs> how this goes because I have so many thoughts and I hope I don't like forget a million things or whatever. Um, I'm probably going to end up having spoilery things in this. So just be aware of that. You know, like, uh, it's hard to talk about some things without just saying what it is. Um, so if you're really worried about that, just come back to this after you've played it through the first time or whatever. Um, but if you already have or you don't care, then, you know, glad you're here. So I, I, dude, I felt like before this game came out that I was, I was just like dying inside. I thought I was just becoming like, like, I was feeling like some real boomer energy, I'm not gonna lie, like, this was the first Fire Emblem game that was announced and coming out that isn't like a Warriors game, like a mainline game that I just wasn't excited for at all, um, and I was really confused by that, because I was starting to think, like, am I becoming that guy, am I becoming that dude that's just like, oh, we'll never have another Thracia again, oh, we'll never have another whatever, like, it's never gonna be the same. It's just gonna be another Three Houses. For the record, I don't really like Three Houses. Um, if you've seen other videos on my channel, you know I have problems with that game. And I was like, dude, I don't want to be that guy, man. <laughs> like, I can't be that guy. That's just so not me. Like, that's that's kind of cringe. Um, and the whole time, I was like, I would see, like, the trailers that would come out, and I was just like, yeah, that looks, looks kind of something. I don't know. I just didn't really have strong feelings about it, and then, like, the week before it released, I was sitting there, I was like, dude, why am I not excited for this, like, like, Awakening was the first game that came out when I was a fan, and I remember that being exciting, because, you know, it was rumored it was gonna be the last one, and of course it wasn't, but at the time, it was, so I was like, oh, that's cool, I, I came into the, the Fire Emblem world, like, kind of just in time for the last hurrah, that's kind of cool, um, and then Fates came out, and I was like, oh, they are making more cool. And then Three Houses came out, and it's like, oh, new story routes, all this crazy shit, it's on the Switch. I was like, whoa, cool, you know? And I was excited for each one of those. Oh, and Echoes, too. I was like, yo, Echoes, Echoes is cool. Um, <laughs> so, it, it was weird for me that I just, I wasn't excited about it at all. And it was a lot of, like, surface-level things, you know? It was like, I didn't like a lot of the character designs right away. And, you know, the story seemed generic and, you know, it was bringing back old characters. And I was like, ah, oh, it's going to be cheap fan service. It's going to be stupid. It's going to be cheesy. And then everyone was saying, like, oh, but the gameplay looks so good. And, like, not that they were wrong in thinking that. But for me, it's like I really have to get my hands on a controller or a keyboard um, to really, like, have an opinion on that like it's really weird for me to watch a game I haven't played and decide whether it is fun or not <laughs> like that's kind of weird to me so any sort of gameplay mechanic that they would show I'd be like oh that's that's something you know like I don't know what to really make of it uh, without getting my hands on it and the night of like probably two hours before midnight, I was like, dude, fuck it, I'm just gonna buy this game, and if I hate it, I can make a video like this and talk about how much I hate it, and it might be funny, um, but overall, I, I, I like it, you know, I like it, um, I'm not gonna sit here and say it's the greatest thing ever made, but it's definitely, I would say it's probably, like, middle of the pack for me, um, I still have yet to play through all the way on maddening mode. Um, I just started that. I'm on like chapter six or something. Uh, I did hard for my first run because I like to just, you know, learn all the mechanics and stuff. And there are quite a few mechanics to learn with this game on the first run. Um, so I just did hard. And I think I'll enjoy it more on maddening, I think. 
I guess we'll see. Um, but like the the. I don't know. There's a weird thing with it because I always feel really exhausted when I'm done playing Switch Fire Emblems, and I don't know why that is. I Part of me thinks it's just like Three Houses PTSD, and, and I just I just feel bad because it's Fire Emblem on the Switch, and I just, I get exhausted, dude. And it's not exhausted as in like, you know, like, my strategic brain is, like, working to its peak potential or anything, and I'm just tired, you know, it's not like FE12 tired, it's like, it's just, like, sluggish tired, and with Three Houses, a lot of that stuff was, like, the non-Fire Emblem parts and things like that, um, but Engage, again, Engage still has some of that, um, and I, I still don't like it, you know, I still don't like the Somniel, I barely did much with it, to be honest, um, there's, there's nothing really more to say than I just don't like it, um, because, you know, like, it, is it, is it inherently wrong to give power to your units in small ways through, like, you know, pretty boring activities? No, you know, I'm not gonna say it's objectively wrong to do that in a game or anything, or to put it in a game, I should say, not to do it as the player, as the player, you should, you know, take every advantage that's given to you in a game. You know, I'm not hating on that. But it's just like, like, you can't convince me to like it. I just don't like it. And it, it really is as simple as that. I just don't like it. Um, but it's it's not as bad as that. Um, there are some cool things in the Somniel that just happen to be in the Somniel that are still very Fire Emblem to me. Um, things like the Ring Chamber and inheriting skills from the different emblems is actually a pretty interesting thing. Uh, the only annoyance I had with that was just how expensive some of the stuff is with SP. It's kind of insane. Like, certain skills are absolutely worth it. Like, having a two-space Kanto for 1,000 SP, easy, easy cop. Like, like no, you will hear no complaints from me about that. But then some of them that get up to like 3 or 4K, and it's just like, ah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think I, over the course of the run, I don't think anybody got that much SP. Like, throughout the entire run. Like, my most used units that were in, like, combat the most were probably Lapis and Ivy. And I know Ivy bought um, a 2,000 SP skill and had, like, 800 left over at the end of the game, so I can't even imagine, like, grinding, like, skirmishes and shit just to get, like, a 4k SP skill, fuck that, honestly, fuck that, that sounds awful, um, so that, that, that could be a little weird, but overall, it's very interesting, um, and the emblems are very interesting, and I actually ended up liking that the old characters were there in, like, a minor way, um, a lot of my favorite parts had those characters in it, you know, like, doing, Doing the paralogues of, like, the old maps was really cool, and hearing the music remixes from those old games is really cool. And, you know, I, I think I enjoy that more because I've played all those other games. Um, I still have not played FE 1 through 3, but, you know, I've played the remakes of those games at the very least. So every map I still recognized, and I still went, oh, that's cool, or, oh, that enemy there is, like, a reference to this thing on the original map. And it's like, you notice those, those little things that's really, really cool. And it doesn't feel cheesy. And that's the craziest part to me. I thought it was going to feel cheesy in that regard. And it really just doesn't. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing about the emblems to me that is, like, cheap or dumb. Um, I think they're really cool. And even, like, just, like, I would start to spend, like, thousands and thousands of bond points just to see the bond supports, like, just to see the one-liners from Ike, or Leaf, or Micaiah, or whoever, because I just, you know, I had bond points left over doing nothing, it's like, oh, let's see what they have to say, you know, and in, there's little, they're little things, they don't overstay their welcome, but it's cool, you know, like, they'll, they'll mention stuff from their old games, and it's just kind of cool, you know, it, it, like, it lights that fire in me, that little kid excited to play Fire Emblem, and I think a lot of this game actually made me feel that again, um, as I said at the beginning, you know, I was starting to think I was, I was becoming a boomer <laughs> and I wasn't going to be able to appreciate the new thing. Um, but Engage proved me wrong. Um, 
and it, it's not just because of the old characters, but that did help. Um, <laughs> that did help. Um, but I actually got attached to quite a few characters in this game. Um, ones that, you know, at face value, I, I thought were like, oh, I guess they look kind of cool. You know, they're fine. Uh, I, feel, I still think Alir looks fucking stupid, but I understand story-wise why she looks that way. And actually, when that part was revealed... It made, made my eyes water just a little bit. Just a little bit. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Like, why, uh, why are you going to do this to me, dude? <laughs> I was like, shit, man. Like, I couldn't help it. That was a sweet moment. Um, I can't hate on that. Um, and overall, the story, like, I'm not going to say the story's good, but it's not terrible. You know, it's the word is serviceable. It's serviceable. It's fine. And I hate using this term, too, because I see a lot of people use it a lot. And when a lot of people use the same term to describe the same thing, eventually that word has no meaning. But it is kind of like Saturday morning cartoon story. There's there's like cartoony-ish villains, you know, and it's, it's like a kind of basic hero story for the most part. But it's not bad. It doesn't make me angry. Um, the The thing that makes me angry about that sort of stuff is... It's just like... It's, it's like these weird goofy moments that I think are supposed to not be goofy. Like sometimes I feel like objectively I should have been feeling like sad or like empathetic or something, but I was just laughing instead and I couldn't help it. Like for example, uh, when Lumera died and that scene happened, I was crying laughing for like a minute, and it's fucked up, I'm fucked in the head for that, but I was crying laughing, because Aaliyah has the line, and says, please don't leave me, mother, and I just had the flashback of Path of Radiance, where Ike says the exact same thing, but it's, please don't leave me, father, so I, I was just laughing, I thought that was fucking funny, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it was funny, um, and then, like, a minute later, after I had recollected myself, I was like, wait, this scene is still going on? This is the longest fucking death scene ever? I barely know this character. Why is this even happening? But that's just me being a hater, I think. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Some some things I just, I, I couldn't really get into. It's not, like, offensively bad. I want to make that clear. But, like, you know, it's not, like, particularly compelling most of the time. Or like when Marnie died was a similar thing. It was like, okay, yeah, I guess that's sad, but like I don't feel sad. And then the the dumbest one, I think, was when Zephia and Gris died and they have that, that like one or two minute scene of them talking and saying, oh, we are a family. Like we weren't evil this whole time. We could have gone to the other side if we really wanted to. It's like, like, man, I just don't care. Like, I just don't care. Uh, <laughs> like the only one of the four hounds that I actually like kind of liked was Gris. Um, and that was mostly because I just think he looked cool and he had a cool ass voice. Um, but that was kind of it. So it's like, eh, you know, it, it's nothing really special, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's the worst thing ever made. At least most things tend to make sense. You know, it like, and the weird part is, uh, th this, if you haven't noticed already, this this entire talk is going to go off the rails, kind of bouncing off different ideas. I don't have an objective here. I'm just kind of talking. But uh, one thing I've noticed a lot in like YouTube comments is like um, the comparison to Three Houses. And I understand why that's a thing, because Three Houses was the most recent entry before this. And it's on the same system and everything. Um, but it's funny both ways when I see, oh, this game is so much better than three houses and then people say like what are you talking about like i miss when fire emblem had good stories and characters like in three houses and people fight over it and i think that's hilarious because at least fire emblem engage knows what the fuck it is like dude engage comes out and it's pretty obviously like 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 honoring all of the old games before it you know it's been rumored it was supposed to be an anniversary thing and it's a pretty damn fun game to play. Like, just mechanically, it's it's a fun game to play. And yeah, the story isn't, you know, breaking any boundaries or anything. But it knows what it is. It's a basic hero-villain story. 
you know, whereas Three Houses, the gameplay most of the time fucking sucks because you're not playing the game. It, it's a menu game, but then it's also a Persona game, and then, like, sometimes it's a Fire Emblem game, and then the story is just this embarrassing fucking half-baked dumpster fire. It's like, what? Why are you... Why? <laughs> why is this, like, like your go-to for, like, this is my Fire Emblem story? Nah, dude, nah, nah, not for me, man, not for me, dog. Absolutely not. I, I think Engage is way better than Three Houses uh, for many reasons. Um, but I don't know, I just think that's funny. Um, you know, if you're just comparing it because it's the most recent entry, I totally get that, but, like, it's weird. It's weird to see people talk about Three Houses' story as, like, a masterpiece when so much of it is just just doesn't make sense <laughs> like it just doesn't make sense man um but anyway anyway um i have a whole vid about three houses if you want to hear me rant about that um so the gameplay is fun the emblem powers are generally very interesting um because you get into the sort of mindset of okay i could pair this emblem with this unit because they're similar or i could pair this emblem with this unit because they're opposite um, and what I mean is a good example of an opposite pairing for me, which seems to be the more quote unquote canonical one is Ivy and Lynn. And the reason Ivy and Lynn works so well is because Ivy has pretty good bulk, actually surprisingly pretty good bulk, crazy magic and like middling speed, you know, flying all that stuff. But if you give her the Lin Ring, she gets plus five speed just from equipping it. And then she gets the speed, is it speed taker? Something like that. Where whenever she gets a kill on player phase, it stacks plus two speed. And it stays there for the whole map. And you can do that five times. So then she has plus ten speed on her middling speed. So then, with her high magic, she just rolls everything. It's kind of insane, and it's super, super fun. And then what I eventually did with her is I inherited the speed plus five skill, which does stack. So she has plus five speed from the ring, plus five speed from the skill, and gains plus ten speed from killing things on player phase. That's fucking crazy. That's really fun. And then she has some extra utility with, like, Astra Storm, which is normally good for, like, killing flyers, because the might is, like, kind of bad. Um, but sometimes you can kill flyers and stuff. Or sometimes I would use it to just, like, hit a boss from far away and make them move. Um, that was pretty nice, too. And then you can kind of go the other way, where you pair it with someone who you just kind of makes sense to pair it with. Um, Lapis was my other favorite unit to use, um, besides Ivy. Lapis is my favorite character in the game. I, I just love her. I think she's great. Um, and I paired her with Ike's Ring for most of the run. Um, and she was a hero for a lot of it, and she had, like, good speed, she had good strength, she had good defense, like, she was just Diamant, but better in my run, anyway, <laughs> it was kind of crazy, um, and then eventually I made her a Wyvern, and with Ikes, you get, you get Wrath, you get Resolve, you get extra defense, and then when you, when you engage, your avoid goes to zero, but you take half damage, and then you get these nasty, like high might weapons it's like holy shit this is a juggernaut freak of a of a unit and now she flies because i made her a wyvern i reclassed her into a wyvern you know wyverns with red armor historically has been a pretty good idea so i did that um and that was really fun too and you know it, it's it's fun to see who goes well with who um because uh like one thing I noticed about the game, too, is, like, it wasn't like Three Houses in the sense of, like, you get all these growth units at the very beginning of the game, and then you just kind of play it out. Um, this felt much more normal Fire Emblem to me, where you would get characters throughout the game that are leveled based on where they join in the game. And it, it, felt, like, it felt like a little bit of Binding Blade um, a bit, because, you know, those early game units, a lot of them are kind of bad. Like, Etia is pretty bad. Clan is pretty bad after a little bit. Fram is annoying as fuck and just kind of a meme. Um, and then, like, Alfred just has no fucking speed, I swear to God. But eventually you get people like Lapis and Citrine. Citrine was another favorite of mine. 
uh, character and unit. She just became a Thoron nuke. She just would one shot things. <laughs> it was just really fun. And you know, and Saline was good when you first get her, especially with Celica. But then she started to kind of teeter off somewhere in the mid game. But then I would get other units later that would make up for it anyway. You know, like you'd get people like Marin and Kagetsu and stuff. And it, that felt good. It felt good to like get a, a little taste of most units. And, you know, it, it ramps up nicely with the difficulty and stuff like that. I think that's how Fire Emblem should be. Um, I don't like that aspect of Three Houses either, that, you know, you just kind of get all your units at the start, and if anybody dies, like, that's just kind of bad for the rest of the run because you don't get replacements. That's not really fun. Um, so that was cool. That was really cool. Um, some other units I used for the long term, you know, since we're just talking about the run, um, was obviously I said Ivy Lapis, All Stars, Citrine, very good. Um, Diamant was good. Sometimes he was mid, but sometimes he was good. Usually he was good. Um, and then I had people like Chloe. Like Chloe, Chloe was fun. Um, in the early game, she's really nice. Like I just, I just glued the Sigurd ring to her, and that worked really well. Uh, late into the game, her strength was so awful, though. Like, she just did no damage most of the time. So I eventually gave her the Lucina Ring so that she could have that passive of, like, doing do-all attacks here and there so she could actually do fucking damage. Uh, that was nice. But she gets a staff in, like, her normal class, so that's fine. She, like, a staff flyer can't be bad. Um, and then uh, Kagetsu, I reclassed eventually into... Uh, was it Wolf Tamer or Wolf Rider or something? Uh, same as Marin. Marin was also crazy good. I love her. Um, and Wolf Rider or Wolf Tamer, whatever it's called, is just better Swordmaster. Honestly, <laughs> like like that that was such a no brainer for me with Kagetsu because he still gets swords. I'm still giving him that plus four killing edge, but he also has one to two range now. Um, I had the Corin Ring on him a lot. Um, and some emblems, like, I still think are kind of bad. Like, like Lucina's is kind of bad. It's really funny. Like, if you've seen, like, the Five Points video where he he just, like, kills Lynn with the, the Lucina all-for-one attack because there are, like, ten people around her and everybody just chain attacks. It's funny, but the damage is so bad. And if you have everybody surrounded with a boss there, like, they're probably dead after using all of their engage abilities so there's like kind of no room for lucina anyway it's just kind of garbage most of the time um i don't think bonded shield is like that important not that it's bad but like i didn't find myself needing it or using it very often um but some actually like grew on me with how useful they are like corin's at first glance i was like okay there's like a there's like a weird reference to supports like if you wait on your turn next to somebody you heal them a little bit and like you build support points i'm like okay like whatever and then it's like pair up was kind of cool i was like okay i get the reference like you don't take the the do all attacks like okay i get it um but corns is actually like super underrated i feel like because um if you give it to a mounted unit um meaning like like a cav unit which wolf tamer counts as cav um they can make water tiles just with the dragon vein, like, without engaging or anything. And that's super helpful for just tanking a void, because it's minus 30 of void on enemies. And then also, if you find yourself in a space where, like, okay, I can't deal with this group of enemies right now, you can just kind of throw that out there, those water tiles, and slow down their movement so that you can deal with them later. Like, that utility is actually pretty sick. And then on top of that, like, the... the uh, well, wow, whatever the fuck the water attack is called. I can't think of it right now. Uh, torrential Roar, that's what it is. Um, that's really cool because you hit them, and then it's like a three-tile-wide attack. All three of those units that you just hit with that all get lowered stats now because of Draconic Hex or whatever it's called, and then they also can't move, which is huge, especially, again, on bosses because now the bosses have lower stats, they're on a water tile, less avoid, and you just kind of roll them, and it, it's it's kind of fun. It's actually really cool. Um, so, like, that one grew on me a lot. 
Um, and then some of them are just, just cool right out of the box. Like, Celica's Warp Ragnarok, that's just cool. Like, you can't convince me that's not cool. Uh, Sigurd having a billion movement is funny, especially in a low-move game, because it's not like, oh, yeah, you have eight move. Ah, uh, let's give you, like, uh, like 12 move. It's like, no, you just went from, like, five to fucking 12. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, that's such a big difference. Um, and that that's so cool, too. Um, Ike's already kind of talked about it. That one's really cool. Um, but yeah, the, I think, I think they all have their uses generally speaking. And then Byleth, Byleth having the four way dance is cool. Um, and back to the whole, like you can, you can kind of play around with like the, 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 uh, the no brainer answer, or you could go opposite of that. Um, and a good example of that is with the Byleth ring, because initially I thought like, oh, what if I gave the Byleth ring to Seedal, the dancer? And then if I just need a four-way dance, I can just do that instead. But what I found out that I like to do anyway is I, I gave late game, I gave the Sigurd ring to Seedal. And then I gave the Byleth ring to Hortensia. I used Hortensia too. I, I didn't even go through the whole list of characters. We'll get to, get to it, I guess. Hortensia is really funny. I thought I would despise her character, but dude, she's, she's just funny. I can't explain it. I love her character. Um... But it's cool because if you dance with Sea Doll and then do some other stuff, then you can still set up a four-way dance with someone else that has the Byleth ring and possibly dance for Sea Doll again so that he can dance. And then you get six dances, essentially. It's like, that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. You know, and I would never advocate for Boots Dancer in like most other games, but Sigurd Dancer in in engage is is actually kind of funny um because again like when the movement is so low across the board if you just need to dart to like the other half of your party to do something it, that's kind of fun <laughs> it's kind of nice um and then also just having like inherent canto uh on the dancer two space canto can be nice sometimes too um there's, there's so much to play around with that's really cool um and i feel like it's not super trivial even when you have all these like busted things, um, if it, it does feel like to me that the game wants you to use them, um, it doesn't want you to just you know hold them until the boss. It 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 feels like it wants you to use them when it's useful, um, and it's nice that you know there are those uh, like fountains or whatever. I, I don't know what to call them. I don't remember what they're called, but the little blue spaces on the map where if you wait on them, your engage meter goes up to full. Like, having those sort of adds to that feeling where it's like, all right, I need I need to use this here. It would be helpful here because in a few turns, I can just get it back and and do it again. Um, and that's fun. You know, the, the whole hoarding thing um, doesn't really come into play, at least for me. It feels like the game wants you to use those things, and it's fun. It's fun to use those things, and that's really cool. Um... Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, like I said, I'm going to be bouncing around all over the place. Uh, other units I use that I keep forgetting to talk about. Um, Hortensia, I, I just said, really underrated character, I feel like. I expected to despise her, and I actually really like her. I think she's funny, and then she has these moments of, like, like actually being, like, a little more genuine, even though she still is just a sassy kid. Um, and, like, those are nice to see, too. Um, which actually segues into my next my next issue i fucking hate i fucking hate avatar characters bro i just hate them i don't think you need to have them at all and a leer in a in a vacuum i really don't have problems with i genuinely don't have problems with a leer um i went female a leer and she was fine the male one seems to annoy me a bit so that's why i didn't pick him i don't know what it is i think he has a punchable face or something i don't know um but but a leer overall uh, you know it was fine you know it's it was kind of my feeling on the story as a whole you know it's just fine you know it doesn't bother me um it's not great but it doesn't bother me uh, but the thing that just grinds my gears dude is somebody somebody over at is has this need to just make everybody into a fucking weirdo whenever they talk to the avatar character and i hate that so much in every game but in this one it was like 
I don't know. Maybe I haven't played Fates in a long time, so I might be eating my words when I play Fates again. But I feel like this was like the worst I've seen, at least in a long time, um, in some cases. Because like, yeah, you can point to the whole thing where it's like, oh, the divine dragon. You're the divine dragon. And it's like, yeah, that's annoying. But like in universe, it makes sense. You know, like everybody knows what that is. It's not like they just met you and think you're the perfect person. You know, they they know what the divine dragon is. So like I kind of get that, but the thing the thing that bugs me so much is when they write these supports for Alir and they turn these perfectly fine or in some cases very likable characters into just fucking weirdos, bro. Like the one that really stood out to me early on was the C support between Alir and Chloe. And Chloe is like, you know, she's not a super favorite of mine. I like her fine. She's cool, you know, very, very nice personality and everything. You know, calming, calming sort of demeanor. You know, it's hard to dislike those kind of characters. But then I saw the C support with her and Aaliyah, and I, I was just like, I was dumbfounded, dude. I was like, like, what the fuck is this? Because if you don't know, that support is basically Aaliyah, like, wakes up in the orchard or something. Like, she just dozed off, like, in the middle of the day. And Chloe comes up, well, no, she doesn't come up, she's already there, and Aaliyah's like, why are you staring at me, like, while I was sleeping? She's like, oh, you know, you're just, it's just really peaceful to watch you sleep. You know, she's outside, like, it's a little weird, but it's not that weird, you know, it just sort of happened. But then they took it too far, because Chloe started to say, like, oh, well, you should just let me watch you sleep more often, and then you'll get comfortable with it, you won't think it's weird. Maybe we should get a bed in your room for me just so I can watch you sleep. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> there's no way a human being wrote this. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? Why? And then, like, another thing that kind of made me mad, too, was, like, again, I really liked Ivy and Hortensia. And their supports I really enjoyed, too. Because um, you learn you learn some things about them. Maybe it's mentioned in a different uh, place in the story, but... Um, where I remember learning it was in the support that they have different mothers and there was like some sort of like conflict or hatred between them because they have the same father and all that all this like political kind of bullshit stuff and there was like this weird distance between them even though you know they are sisters and it, it's it's a cool interaction because like Hortensia kind of like lets down the the sassy facade for a second as they're talking about Hortensia's mother and they're saying, like, you know, Ivy's mom hated Hortensia's mom, like, with a passion. And Hortensia's mom was just such a sweet person and such a gentle, caring person that she even won over Ivy's mom over time. And, like, like that, that talk was really sweet. And, and Hortensia just kind of, like, tears up. It's like, thanks. Like, I, I really needed to hear that. And I was like, oh, dude, that's so sweet. Like, I love that so much. And then they have the Hortensia support with Aaliyah. And they basically have the same conversation. And Aaliyah says the same thing that Ivy said. It's like, well, your mother probably withstood all that crap so that you could have a better future. And Hortensia's like, what? Really? You think so? That's crazy. And it's just like a, it's just like a budget worse version, a less emotional version of the conversation with Ivy. And I'm like, why is Aaliyah having this conversation? Like, it worked so much better with her actual sister. Like, what the fuck is this? I, I'm, I'm to the point, like, in my life where I'm just like, dude, I don't want to ever see an Avatar support ever again. They all just fucking suck. Like, I just hate them. And that's not fair, because they're not all bad. But, man, some of them are just bad, dude. And that's my that's my problem with Aaliyah. It's not Aaliyah. It's the effect that they seem to have on the writing of other characters at times. And that's that's so annoying for me. Uh, like, I, ugh. And, like, I, I can't hold that against Aaliyah herself. I, I, I really don't, I promise. But God, whoever wrote those. <laughs> Jesus Christ, whoever wrote those. You suck. <laughs> you suck. Um, uh, who else? Who else did I use? Uh, uh, Pandreo actually was pretty cool. Uh, he was a, more of a filler unit, but he was good enough filler to where I just kind of kept him around. Um, and he, he's, he seemed like a pretty chill character too, like very, very open-minded and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I like those kind of characters. He, he seemed pretty cool overall. 
Um, I don't like when he does like the the howl thing, you know, <laughs> that he does. So I was like, okay, could you please stop that? Um, but but he's actually like pretty cool. I like him too. Um, and then I, I had like uh, Malvier and and Vale like in in like the last few chapters. They're kind of filler, but like they're fine enough to contribute at least on hard. You know, maybe maddening they'll just be terrible. Um, and, you know, that's fine if they are. Uh, but they they were good enough to just you know I'd had deployment slots for them you know that's fine. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting somebody. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but I might not be. Uh, but anyway, um, so overall, like the the game was enjoyable mostly for the gameplay. Um, I think that was cool. Um, I I was there was certain things that was like I was a little hesitant about at first, like when I saw. Um, that some enemies, mostly bosses, had like multiple health bars. I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. I don't know that I love that. Um, and uh, I'll get into why in a second. Part of it, I think, as I said, is like maybe it's just three houses PTSD and I just don't want to see it. <laughs> but like, you know, it's just like some urge in me that's like, get that out. Um, but I don't know. I feel like multiple health bars kind of doesn't. Or at least it really didn't matter on hard. Um, again, we'll see about maddening for a lot of things, but I feel like it didn't really matter on hard because you know someone someone could come up to me and say like, oh yeah, warping Asbel to a boss and just rolling him in Thracia is cheese, and I'd be like, yeah, I mean it is cheese. Still funny, still gonna do it, but it is cheese. I'm not stupid. Um, and, and they'll be like, I like the multiple health bars on bosses because you can't just do that. You can't just warp someone up there and kill them. But is that really so different as playing slow and just getting everybody up there slowly to the boss and then everybody spams engage attacks and stuff for a single turn and three health bars go by just like that anyways? Like, is that really so different? Aren't we kind of doing the same thing in a much, much slower way? Does that really make it harder? I kind of don't think so. I'm not saying it's inherently bad, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, it's just something to note. Um, and then uh, there was something else. There's something else gameplay wise. It was like kind of something. Fuck. Oh, and you know what? They did the three houses thing again with the fucking villains that I hated too because they like this game is just allergic to killing off like main story villains. And like I, I'm down for a villain escaping once or twice, you know, if they're like really powerful or really, really uh, smart or something. But oh my God, dude, I was so sick of seeing the fucking hounds. So sick of it because I think you kill them like close to five times each. Might be lower for like Marnie or something, but I'm pretty sure it's like five or maybe six times on average to kill all of them. And that gets fucking old, man. Like, <laughs> I gotta be real, that gets fucking old. And it's not just because, like, you know, it's the same face that I'm killing, like, over several chapters. It's more so because, like, the strategy is, like, basically the same every time. I think the peak version of that was. Uh, I think it was chapter 17. I don't know the numbers super well off the top of my head, but it was the one where they attack that like port town in Firene and they all have the rings. Like Gris has the Celica ring. Um, Zephia has Sigurd. Evil Vale has Marth. Um, and then they bring back Hyacinth and he has the leaf ring. And that's where you get the leaf ring back. That chapter I felt like was the peak of that because they were probably at their most powerful but then after that, those same fights happen several more times, but are just easier. And then it then it's just like a it's more of a diversity is, issue than it is like killing the same person. Um, for me, it's just like okay, well, I've killed this dude three times with the Celica ring, and now you want me to kill him without the Celica ring? Like how is how is that more engaging? All right, I had to fit one in there, but it's like like how is that how is that more fun? Like, ah, I don't know. I don't like that. That's annoying. It's not like Hubert though, where like with Hubert, I physically hated Hubert, so it made me mad. But here, it was just like a gameplay thing. I was just like, man, stop that, please, <laughs> stop. That's annoying. I don't like that at all. 
because um, eventually I actually got sick of the the theme that plays um, when you fight the hounds, and I I liked that song um, at the at first, but I started to get fucking sick of it. Um, don't ruin a good thing. That's not that's not cool. Um, then the only other thing I'm sort of wondering about with maddening in my head right now is on your first maddening run, you have to play on fixed growths, which sounds like a more balanced idea. But I, I'm currently in the camp of like, why does that even matter Be, with this game? Because like even in Path of Radiance, you have fixed mode, and I'm not going to get into the intricacies of that. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, but it's it's fixed growths essentially in a basic sense. That's what it is. You don't really have like big deviant numbers here or there, based on like random levels. Um, so you get a more tailored experience in a game like that, but also it kind of takes the fun out of it for me a little bit. You know, I, I look back on all my runs of a lot of games and I have very specific memories of certain units being like so terrible when they're normally good or so good when they're normally terrible because you got lucky or unlucky. And that's really funny, you know, that's part of the story of you playing the game for that run. And I think Fixed Growth kind of takes that out. Um, but the the real problem I, I, I'm wondering about with this game is, like, why do Fixed Growths matter when you have all this extra shit? Like, you have the Somnail stuff and skirmishes, and then also you can infinitely reclass, too, like in Awakening. Like, there's no level cap, so why do we care about fixed growths if you can just keep getting levels? Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering about that. I'm kind of wondering, like, what's the point even with that? <laughs> like, like I don't know. And again, we'll see. I'll probably stream some of my Maddening run uh, at the very least. I feel like I should. Because, I mean, who, who the fuck's going to watch me play Thracia when there's a brand new Fire Emblem toy out on the market? You know, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm not stupid, guys. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, but I, I am, I am kind of confused why, why fixed growths is even a thing, uh, for this style of a Fire Emblem game. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I think, I think that's all I really need to say for right now. It's a fun game. Uh, overall, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, the story, I don't really care. A lot of it is honestly pretty forgettable. But the game is overall pretty fun to play. I'm not going to sit here and say it's in like my top five or something. Um, but hey, it's better than FE7. It's better than Three Houses, for sure. Um, it's better than Revelation. It's better than... Uh, mm, uh, we'll, we'll have to see about the other ones after Maddening. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening uh, to this kind of all-over-the-place rant of my various thoughts after my first playthrough of the game. Uh, peace out. Take care.